All right, so welcome to this presentation. So just as was mentioned, we're gonna talk about an active learning environment with your OER. And specifically with the interactive learning environment, we're gonna talk about H5P a little bit more in depth. So if this is your first presentation where you've heard the term H5P, um, it stands for HTML5 package. So similar to if you've heard of SCORM or Flash, these are little interactive elements that you can easily add to your course. And because it's HTML5, it works on most browsers um, with those platforms. And as you can see in the example here, there's anything from doing a multiple choice question to image pairing. Um, there's also sequencing, and we'll get kind of more into some other um, examples out there just because there is a wide variety of activities that you can do with H5P. Um, so let me go ahead and just talk about some of those examples here. Here's a huge list of all of the content types that are available to you as a content creator in creating H5P. And let me just go ahead and showcase some of these. So you've got Agamotto. Um, when I look this one up, it's basically a slide that allows you to kind of show progression. So right now I've got a map and now I can see the rivers on that map. And now I can see the um, different countries in Europe. And so this one's great if you've got a diagram and you're trying to show the different layers. Um, that might be one use case for, for this one. Um, we'll kind of show the, the fill in the blanks. So this one is one that um, I can go through here and answer the questions. And then the nice thing is it allows me to check to see, so I'll get this last one wrong. It's a great way to get initial feedback. So very more of that formative assessment type. So I'm able to you know, create my content. Students are able then to see what score they got. They can show their solutions and then they can try again, very simple. And with H5P, they've got simple ones like that, but then here's one that's actually pretty complex. That's really cool. So this is the branching scenario. So again, this is one of the more advanced um, HT, H5P content types. And the cool thing about this one is it's a, because it's a branching scenario. So this one is talking about um, a home visit. So it gives me information about this client that I'm gonna see. And then when I click proceed, it's gonna play a video kind of setting the stage. And then let's see if I can just skip to, so after I've watched the video, it's gonna ask me a, a question. And so then I can answer it. And based on what I answer, I'm gonna watch a video that's related to that scenario. Um, so again, more advanced, and, and, but it gives you the ability to do different things. Um, and so let me go ahead and just talk about some of the benefits of H5P that I found is because H5P is open, um, the content is reusable, shareable, and free. Um, it's pretty easy to get share it across different platforms. I also find it really fun to create the content. So if I'm looking at, you know, uh, an article or something, some sort of instructional material, my mind as an instructional designer, I think about, okay, what activity can I create that helps reinforce what students are going to be doing in this, in this um, material? So I might create a drag and drop or something that helps them with the terminology. Um, wide variety of things that you can do. You also get to take ownership and add these creations to your portfolio. Um, and you're also creating content for you because there's been many times where I found an artifact on the web that's been really cool. Um, it does something that I want it to do except for one piece. So with H5P, if you see someone else's, um, it's pretty easy to take theirs, modify it to what you want it to be. And so again, you're creating that content for you. Now in the traditional sense, um, usually when we talk about H5P, we really focus on the concept that the teacher publishes this H5P and then the students are the ones who are consuming the information. So we use Moodle here at Idaho State University. So let me kind of show you what that might look like. So I've got the Moodle book here. And then this allows me, so I've got my content and I've got my H5P embedded where students can then interact with it. Um, and because it's implemented into Moodle, um, so I'll kind of show 
just a tidbit of this example. So in Moodle, every course has this content bank. The content bank then has this area with the H5P editor. I can create my content here and it's stored at the course level. And then going back to the book, I'll just edit this chapter. I have this insert H5P button. So when I click on that, I'm able to tell it, look at my content bank and I can pick a specific file here and select this file. And then it's inserted there. I save changes. And then that H5P is good to go for my students to, to consume this activity. Um, the method that I wanna really talk about, and this is what, where I get really excited about the use of H5P, is rather than having it be the teacher who publishes the content, let's have the students be a part of this um, content creation process. So we get more of this networking where students are working together and building their own H5P. We then you know, look at it, discuss about it, um, and go from there. So here's another example in Moodle where I have um, a form, a discussion form, and I've made it at the course level. I've given the students um, the special permissions they need to access the content bank and to in, embed the H5P. So you might get something like this where the student, they've created their, um, their activity, they've wrote a little bit about it, and then students are able to um, try it out and then they can provide feedback. So again, it's this constant growing and, and there's been times where I've done this where students said, oh, I really like your H5P, but could you modify it in this way? And usually I've been able to do those modifications. So they're helping me make my H5P content better. Um, so again, it's that community of as we're learning, we're creating, and then we're also sharing um, kind of that, that pattern. And so, this is where I really wanna focus on the strategies, just because with H5P, there are a lot of different ways you can go about it. So I wanted to try and enlist most of those, or, or maybe it's still just the tip of the iceberg. But if you're completely new to H5P, I definitely recommend going to h5p.org. This allows you to create a free account. You're then able to try with their limited editor, some of the H5P to get used to and, and play with, get familiar with. There's also a free tool called Lumi Education. Uh, this is a desktop application that you can download for free. And it allows you to create H5P right on your machine. So you don't need to have any platform to do the initial creation of it. Um, so this is a great tool for, for just creating it on your own machine. Um, and then the same team that did H5P.org created h5p.com, which is a paid service. So like I said, h5p itself is free, but it's the hosting, the storage piece that you have to look at uh, as far as, you know, what are you paying for? So most of the um, LMSs out there like Blackboard, Brightspace, Canvas, they all require, at least for my research, they all re require some amount of h5p.com to host the content. And then using an uh, external tool from H5P, you can then easily integrate it with your um, LMS. Both WordPress and Pressbooks have a paid tier that you can get. Um, this allows you to, um, when, with that paid tier, you have access to the plugin. And so let me go ahead and just show you um, that piece because uh, we, we currently have access to, to Pressbook. So I've created, a, as part of this presentation, I've created a textbook um, to show some of these examples. And so I'm just gonna hop down to this area where I've got my press book. I'm able to put videos in here. And then if I come down, I've got my H5P activity that's already embedded. And press book works similar to to Moodle in, the, in a sense where you've got your H5P content area here. So this is where you create your H5P in Pressbook. And then when I go to create a chapter, 
I then have the add H5P button here. So then I can pick that um, H5P that I've created and I can insert it into a special place here. And then the nice thing about Pressbook, because Pressbook has that setup where you can download um, your, your book chapters um, and it should, because you can't interact with H5P in a printed format, it does give you the link that you can, you know, type in the browser on your phone and it will take you to that um, web page where then you can interact it. So you're still kind of looking at the book, but then you still, it makes it fairly easy to get to that information online to still use the interactive components. And then as I've talked about and, and showcased in, in Moodle, especially Moodle version 3.9, H5P is something that's already integrated. So um, users on that platform have that already built in. Um, they do have a plugin for earlier ver versions to use H5P. And while all of these um, processes are, are great, these strategies, um, I was still left with um, the idea of, you know, how is someone able to do this? Someone, an instructor who is maybe teaching K through 12, maybe they don't have the funds for h5p.com. Maybe they don't have a, the typical LMS that's supported. So I still wanted to investigate further, you know, is there any possible way to host your own h5p without, you know, the costs involved? And so that's exactly what I did. So um, a lot of people smarter than me on GitHub um, created a repository. And GitHub also gives you the option, it's called GitHub Pages. So when you have your repository of files on GitHub, they give you the ability to turn it into a web page. So this is a very basic web page that I've created on my own. I'm not paying anyone to host this. I just Rather than paying, I, I went the route of just learning a little bit of code to be able to do this on my own. So very simple web page, but then with my GitHub, I'm able to then store my H5P on this website. And then um, if I've got a, a blog, and I'll pull that up so you can see, for example, in this case, I'm using Weebly, but if I've got this blog here, then, um, I can easily embed my H5P from my own website and then put it into here for other people to, to play with. Um, so that is the other route. Um, partly because of this, I have a sister who, who teaches it in high school. And I was talking to her about the great things about H5P, but that was the missing piece is she didn't really have the resources. And so we're gonna kind of play with this further with, with her and see how it, how it goes of her being able to host her own H5P and, and use it in class. And then I wanted to spend a little bit of time and talk about the student feedback portion from this. So last summer I developed a course as part of my coursework. It was an authoring class and we, we were doing some specific outcomes. So students were to create an interactive graphic, um, instructional video, we also had them do a virtual tour and also design a, a web unit. And a big tool or premise of that was giving students H5P, giving them those editing privileges and then seeing what they created from it and, and having a discussion. And so some of the feedback that we got, as you can see on the screen is, is there are students who really enjoyed being able to create something and, and talk about it with classmates. And that course specifically, even though it, it followed a specific pattern, um, because we were focusing at using different content types, even though the lessons felt or seemed repetitive, they actually were less because we were always taking that concept and applying it to something new. And I will say H5P is really easy to use. It's one of those that it, it initially doesn't require a whole lot of coding. A lot of it is it's basically a form give your H5P a title. Um, do you want to insert an image? It just depends on what content type you use, but you just follow out and fill out that form and then it creates it for you. And then H5P also, or H5P.org also has a ton of tutorials. Um, 
So if you're trying something new, like the more advanced interactive video or branching scenario, there's tutorials that you can follow that are provided by h5p.org that you can go through and, and apply. And so that's really it as far as talking about H5P and implementing it in your current OER, whether you're using Pressbook or you're more building something inside your course, um, H5P is a great tool for that. Um, so this is now where we can have more, uh, that time for questions if anyone has those. Um, and also if you have any specific questions after the presentation, you're more than welcome to email ITRC at isu.edu. This just goes to all of our staff here in the Instructional Technology Resource Center. Um, if you want to meet with me specifically, I'd be happy to talk about you know, those strategies of using H5P with you to the best of my ability. And I've included that um, scheduling appointment link here for me. So if there's any additional questions, let's open that up now. Lance, it looks like you do have a question in the chat. Um, Spencer asks, how time intensive is it to create content? So the content itself is actually really easy to create. Um, let me go ahead and just show the creation process of one of those activities. So let me come to the content bank here. And, I, and again, it depends on what content type you use. I will say that. So for example, with the, um, the 360 virtual tour, that one allows you to, um, if you have a, an image of 360, so a picture that's formatted that way, um, it's really easy to do that piece of it, but creating the image itself might take more time depending on if you're taking three panoramics and then, and then um, splicing them together. That's where, where it can be fairly time consuming. But if I'm just gonna take like the, the accordion here, this is that kind of drop down menu item. So I can just give this a name. Um, and then I can just easily put option one, text, add a panel, option two and then save changes. And so now that's already built. And if I polish this out even more, then I can easily add it to um, wherever I need it to be. Great, and I'll just add, if you're interested in asking a question on your mic, you can either raise your hand in the uh, panel, the participants panel, or you can let me know in the chat and I can uh, allow you to talk. Happy to do that. Lance, I actually have a question for you uh, mm -hmm. while we're waiting for other questions to come in. And I, I can't type it because of my, my co-host role. So I figured I'd just ask. Um, I was wondering, I, in my experiences with H5P, I've been a little frustrated with my limited ability to control the way it looks when using that like WYSIWYG editor. Is there any way to crack open the hood and start to do a little bit more HTML control over um, you know, image sizes or things like that? I will say if you're using the tool in, in Moodle, like how it's expected to, to be used, you're not gonna be able to, to do much editing in that sense. But I will say if you plan to do more of the self-hosting option, because basically what I'm doing here is when you create your H5P, it produce, produces a, a .h5p file. That helps the program know how to read it. You can technically change that to a .zip, and then extract those files, then you're actually able to open up the hood, dive in and, and make modifications. Um, like for example, I think I've got that in here. So this one, by default, I wasn't able to add this bolding 
when I was doing this, this question type, but because I'm doing the self-hosting, I'm, I'm looking at the files themselves and are able to edit those. So it, it, it can be done, but again, it's going to, that's where you're going to get more of that intensive time of going and, and kind of going deep into the files and, and, and changing and modifying those. But as a beginner, um, you're not going to have some of those same capabilities. Thank you. And you also have a comment in the chat. Um, Memo says, this is very cool. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, <laughs> for sure. It is very cool. And then I will put in just a plug uh, with that open textbook I've created. Um, you should be able to, to find it. It's just isu.pressbooks.pub and it's open pedagogy is the name of the book. As I was kind of thinking of this, this conference, I was trying to think, you know, what could I do? Um, but let me go ahead and hop over to the chapter because I do, if you are interested in the self-hosting piece, I am putting together resources that you can read about, you know, if you wanted to self-host, what, what parts do you need? And that's available for you online, just looking at that open textbook. Awesome. And Spencer had raised his hand, so he um, should be able to ask you his question on the mic. Um, Lance, this is all really interesting. And I can see that uh, the capabilities of this technology can really expand the repertoire of, of professors and students alike. Um, and the interactivity of it, the, the diversity of activity, I think would be really valuable in gaining the attention of students. So maybe I'm answering my own question as I'm talking, but but I, 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 I confess I missed a few minutes at the beginning because I registered late for this, but um, what, what would you say are like the two or three most uh, um, important reasons why um, it's useful to adopt this kind of technology? Right, so I'll kind of reiterate the part because my, my focus in, in all of this is giving the students the ability to create content. Um, and so as an instructional designer, kind of how I see it is before a student can create any kind of interactive content, they have to understand the content that they're reading. So this kind of helps them get into the material, into the text to understand it. And then that second piece of them actually creating it, they're applying what they've learned and trying to put it in a, in a way that's meaningful, reusable. Um, so that that would be kind of some of the, the benefits I would share. And then um, I think the last one is, especially when you get your students on board, then rather than all of this weight on you as the instructor of how am I gonna create this content, you basically have, you know, five, 10 students in your class or possibly more that are doing this process for you. So then all you're doing is really just making sure that they understand that what they're building makes sense. Um, but then you have those examples that you can reuse for um, other classes or, or other environments. Thank you. I, you know, as I, I was looking at Bloom's taxonomy recently, just yesterday, or I can't remember when, but uh, I think creating content is like one of the highest things on the Bloom's taxonomy. So, mm -hmm. so it really does require a lot of uh, more cognitive skills to create those kinds of things. So that seems like a really valuable tool. For sure. Yeah, I think so as well. And, and I'm excited to see more and more people to use it. Great, uh, thank you again. That's, this is fantastic. And um, I particularly liked how you pointed out how people might be able to use self-hosting ways like Weebly and other things to incorporate content in other ways if they were in K through 12 or other institutions. So thank you so much.